Let's open up and take a look at a pair of Arndahl Sound 1723 2S subwoofers. Alright, for my home theater I used to sport a set of REL S5 SHO subwoofers. But I bought them back when I bought my original gear to put together with some Focal Towers. And they're a little more musically minded, a little more musically focused. And I've been looking for more of a home theater focused, deeper, bigger, fuller, stronger type of bass response and subwoofer extension for our space, particularly with the home theater 2.0 upgrade. And I've been shopping all kinds of stuff, Rhythmic, PSA, all of the internet direct brands, some boutique brands as well. Rel again, potentially with the 1508 series. But one of the ones that stood out to me as a particular subwoofer of interest has been the Arndell Sound. They've gotten a lot of press lately around YouTube, positive press. Made me really intrigued to take a look at their stuff. I'm sticking with the Focal speakers, of course, but Arndell seems to make a very high pedigree subwoofer. Better materials, nicer finish, and really, really great performance. Audioholics reviewed some of these and some other places uh, that really go to the detail of measurements and verifying acoustical performance and operations and so on. And they seem to really stack up and deliver. So I have here two 1723 2S subwoofers. Now there's a lot of debate about home theater and sealed versus ported. And if you're doing home theater, go ported. If you're doing music, go sealed. I think that's a little bit archaic, uh, not necessarily true. Ported works really well. A lot of subwoofers have very fast transient response and being ported doesn't automatically mean that you don't get that characteristic out of it. But at the same time, being sealed doesn't mean that you can't dig deep and have great in-room performance and other excellent subwoofer characteristics. So it's not just a cut and dry decision between ported and sealed. For me, my space, the size of the room, 3,000 cubic feet-ish and other characteristics of what I'm dealing with, I think sealed is perfectly fine and I would rather have some of the dynamics and maybe the reliability of sealed sound versus dealing with potential side effects of, of going ported and whatnot. So that was my, my choice and opting in the Arndell line then for the two S's is, is I think the right size, the right performance. And I had a couple specific design constraints that I was trying to achieve in my setup. I went, my, my room is now all in walls per the video, the upgrade path and the install vlogs and such that I've been showing. And so, but the subwoofers are one of the components that will actually still be visible in the space. And I want a really nicely finished thing. Um, not vinyl, not the Duratex or whatnot, bed liner style finish. I want something finished nicely, painted. And so these subwoofers are made with HDF instead of MDF. They have a nicer finish, a nicer presentation, and a nicer style in the room. So that was one criteria, number one. In addition to having excellent performance and online app features and, and so on, I think all around this is just a really great package of a subwoofer, and I'm really interested to see how it performs in the space. One of the things that people really like about the RHEL subwoofers is their transient response, their speed and so on. I think this same subwoofer here, I think this subwoofer here will deliver on a lot of what people liked about the RELs, what I like about the, what I liked about having the RELs, but add a new dimension, uh, a new dimension of depth and extension and performance while maintaining all of those other pieces as well. So let's open this up and take a close up look at it and see what we get. So we have an unpacking guide, that's interesting, and some documentation. I have downloaded and read some of the Arndahl user manuals and stuff. They're pretty funny. They put some comedy and some, uh, some funny elements and stuff in there. It's worth a read. So this is a big and heavy unit basically to get it out of the box. It's a flip over mechanism. Carefully turn the box over. You may ask your mother for help, apparently. Protection. You got the white gloves. Power cord. European style. 
hopefully we find a US power cord too. nice, actually nice fabric bags. Magnetic grills. So it lets a pretty good amount of light through there. I will be going grills on. Fold back the carton flaps and set aside all the stuff on the top. Untie the bag and push it down like a sock. up all around here to get it get it off the top of the unit so that we can pull this over pull this off when we flip it up the feet are facing up we put this back in flip it over right move the box raise the curtain and reveal your new baby Place on the place the beautiful magnetic grills. Prepare your neighbors for some proper earthquakes. Plug and pray. All right, you want to help me? Flip it over. All right, let's go this way. Okay, let's roll it. Push it back. Let's roll it. pieces fell. It's good though. It's fine. Here, can we put these back on this side? Oh, okay. Put it back. Take this off. Because we'll get the, we'll put the box back together. Wait. You want to do the honors? Here, lift that side. Reveal our new baby. Pull it up. Pull it up. Nice and slow. Oh, wow. This looks nice. Nice fabric bag. I like fabric bags. I like nice packaging in my electronics. When you buy something expensive and high end, you just really want to you want to have a nice experience when you open it. You want it to present itself nice. It's double sided too. Yep, there's two woofers. So there's four models in the 1723 series. There's two sealed and two two ported, two vented. And the main difference is size and volume and so on, of course. But the 1V, the 1S, has one driver, the 13.8 inch driver. Let me turn it. The 2S and the 2V have two. And of course, they have different size amplifiers and such to go with that. So there, I think there's a lot of virtue in the dual drivers and the opposing drivers. And talking to some of my integrator friends and such, we're very much recommending dual drivers, opposing drivers. So anyway, my first impression of this is this looks very, very nice. Very nicely painted, nicely finished. I love the is that chamfer, chamfered edges. Real clean, got the Arundel logo there at the bottom. We take a look at the back. So looking at the back, we've got our power switch, power, power cord connector, and then XLR and RCA inputs, dual inputs, dual outputs, which is nice. And there's a lot of configuration and programmability and so on available within the, uh, within the settings of the subwoofer. And I like how there's both an input and an output loop connector, that's great. We've got a USB port for service. We've got a 12 volt trigger. That's awesome. I may take advantage of that versus the auto sensing. We'll see. And then one of the nicest thing about this is the little, is that maybe a two or three inch LCD screen where you manage all of your options here with the menu enter, 
and a rotary dial that has a really nice feel to it. It doesn't click in so you would why well, there's an enter button separately. 1200 watt uh, play amplifier. This looks really nice. I'm very impressed. This driver as well, it looks, it looks really nice. So this is a pretty hefty monster, 92 pounds, about 20, 21 inches or so high, but that's going to fit me fine. This is going to fit just under the level of my screen. That's what I was looking for in my install. Jury's out whether I'm going to put both of these at the front, space them out on the quarter points of the wall, or I might go one front, one back, or maybe move them around if I can get some help to actually re relocate them in the space. I will be using XLRs. I'll be calibrating and, and driving these off of the um, Anthem ABM 70. Alright, if I... Can you come to So there was only one power cord in there. European style. I don't see a, a three-prong US power cable. Thankfully I have some. Hopefully I can, I'll use the ones I have. I might end up buying some nicer power cords for this and for my Parasound amplifiers anyway. At least marginally so. Let's take a look at how the grill fits. Yeah, that looks nice. Snaps right on there. Has a little bit of little bit of movement, but nice, nice and stable. Yeah, I'll probably be going grills on in the theater. So that's a quick look, unboxing and, and little overview of the Arundel 1723 2S subwoofers. Here it is sitting in the room. Nice, just under the screen. Perfect fit. This is kind of really what I think I was looking for in terms of a subwoofer. But we'll get it hooked up, get it calibrated, get it through put it through its paces, watch the movies and see what's what. So stay tuned for a whole lot more coverage. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Look down in the description for ways to support the channel. Thanks.